Today's video, I'm gonna cover something that people talk about in sports all the time, bending your knees, bending your knees. And I had covered this before in the past, but I wanna cover it again and uh, just talk a little bit about, you know, I feel like it's a real uh, misconception on when people talk about bending your knees. And uh, I think there's some real gray area there. Okay, so what I'm gonna talk about is uh, I got Danny here to demonstrate as well, but a lot of people don't realize that when you bend your knees and you stress your quads, you tighten your hip flexors up, okay? And now you can't turn your punches. There's not gonna be no torque in your punches. You cannot do that, okay? So a lot of times, like I say, guys get, well, they get a wide stance because they try to get leverage too. That's another thing they do, they get wide leverage. And, you know, people will argue that, you know, there's all these guys that are really good that have a wide stance, but a lot of people don't understand that these guys win by default because there's so many of them that don't have their fundamentals together. All these stars today, and this is going to cause, I'm sure it's going to cause a little bit of controversy, but they're not beating guys like Sugar Ray Leonard and Sugar Ray Robinson and James Tony and guys like that. Those guys, you guys, you watch those guys like that, that's when you're watching guys like Ezra Charles and their stance was per. I mean, these guys had beautiful fundamentals, okay, beautiful fundamentals. These guys win in spite of their flaws because of their talent. It's like Muhammad Ali did a lot of bad things, but he won in spite of it. Okay, so there's certain things that you gotta know that you don't wanna copy. And certain things you gotta know are fundamentals. In every sport, a wide stance, again, there's always exceptions. You get guys that have a wide, wide batting stance and they knock it out of the park and everybody thinks that's the right way because they see the one guy. But if you see the majority of the guys, they don't have a wide stance. Okay, so in playing basketball, you're not going to play defense with your feet out. Now, if you get a guy that does it and he's a great defensive player to say that's the way to do it. No, it's the guy is so talented that he's making he's he's making up for it in spite of his flaw. Okay, it's not because of what he does it's because it's in spite of it. So basic fundamentals in every sport. When you're swinging a tennis racket, you're not gonna be here. When you're swinging, so what I'm saying is, is if, as good as the guys are, sometimes when they get a wide stance like that, you know what, they can be, they can do things and, and be maybe awkward and win because of awkwardness. And guys still, again, but if you get a kid and you wanna develop them from the ground up and you really have a chance to develop the perfect fighter you don't want to go there, okay? You got guys that are wide and they've been doing it for their, their whole career. It's sometimes it's going to be very difficult to get them to do the fundamental way, the right way, and they've learned how to make what they do work, okay? So again, because of their talent and certain things that they do, maybe it makes them even more awkward because of their wide stance. So it makes them uh, awkward can win sometimes, but these guys are not winning because that's the correct fundamentals of being wide like that. And if you had them from the beginning and you made them as good of an athlete as they are and they win because in spite of it, if they had their feet together and you start them at a young age, they're gonna be better. You can't step and punch, you can't move with a wide stance, you can't hit as hard. It's just a fact, even if you have a guy, again, that can punch hard, he's punching hard in spite of it. He's got other gifts, okay? It's not because of that, it's in spite of that. Okay, so we're going with the basic stance is what we're working on as far as knee bend today, what I'm talking about. I went off into a tangent, but what I'm gonna talk about is you always talk about the head is towards the back leg. The head is over that back leg. Your head, when you look down, you should see your knee. See, you can even bring your right foot up a little bit more, right? Okay, so now you got a heel toe stance, at, at minimum a heel toe stance. What I always say is that's the, that's the minimum where your foot should be able to kick past that toe to be able to, like if you're a soccer player and you're gonna kick, okay? Now, you could have it even a little bit more over because the bottom line is you just don't want that foot getting behind that left foot because then you're not gonna, it's gonna lock your hip, you're not gonna be able to turn your right hand, okay? So you wanna, you wanna be able to have that right foot a little bit over there, at least, at least at heel toe, if not a little bit more over, okay? So now, where you, a little bit, like I said, there is a little bit of wee, leeway where someone feels comfortable. The bottom line, what we're talking about is knee bend today. A lot of guys will be in their stance and they bend their knees 
Okay? Now, when you bend your knees, all you're doing is stressing your quads. Now you are tightening up your hip flexors. You can't punch. You can't move as quick. Okay? And, you, and your upper body movement is not as smooth. I hear these guys talk about wide stance and then they're able to move all these angles like this. Go watch Sugar Ray Leonard just move his upper body, move his waist. And James Tony and these guys move at the waist. They bend at the waist and they spin and they walk around the guy because they're in position to move their feet. They don't have to bring their feet back together to be able to move their feet. Their feet are in position to just do whatever they want to do. They step around the guy. They, they walk around the guy. They're, and I will put some clips up of Sugar Ray Leonard, how beautiful he was. And James Tony, these guys were like, if you want to talk about basic stuff, stance, feet, feet wise, fundamentals. Those are two of the greatest to ever watch. James Tony, uh, Sugar Ray Leonard, just Sugar Ray Robinson. The two sugars are just, you, it's hard to argue past. These guys are very, either Mount Rushmore or very close to it. Okay. So what we're talking about is again, so he's not, it's just like in, in, in football, you're not going to be able to throw the ball with bending your knees like this. Okay. You go back, you push your butt back. That's the biggest thing that people understand. You've got to push your butt back. It's like there's a drawer behind you and you're closing the drawer. You're closing the drawer by pushing your, that's right, you're pushing your butt back and closing the drawer. You're, you're, you're just sitting, it's like sitting on a little half stool, okay? What happens a lot of times when guys don't have strong glutes or they don't know how to push their butt back the right way, that's when they go to the wide stance, because they, they, they want to feel that stability of that wide stance because they're not filling it in their glutes the way they should. They're not, you understand? Yeah. So that's a big thing. A lot, of, a lot of guys will do that wide stance just for the simple fact of they feel like that's more stability. When they get too narrow and they don't push their butt back, they feel like, and they don't know how to bend at the waist and push their butt back because that's what that is. When you push your butt back, then you are going to have a natural knee bend without the weight on your quads and without the weight on your hip flexors, mm -hmm. okay? So when you do that the right way and you push your butt back, you're gonna have a natural knee bend. It's like when you're playing basketball, you're not here. You just push your butt back and you're here when you're playing basketball and playing defense, okay? You're here, you're here, you're here. Okay, you're not, you're not down here. Again, there's guys that get low like that and they're able to do what they gotta do sometimes and they're, like I said, they're doing it in spite, but it's not, it's not fundamental 101, okay? And in boxing, again, you go watch James Tony and Sugar Ray Leonard, Sugar Ray Robinson, and, and, and those are the guys like, and I can name 20 more. I can name 50 more, okay, of all-time greats. Those are the ones just stuck into my head today, and you watch those guys, and they're just unbelievable, and they're fundamentally, I mean, technically those are, I mean, just some of the greatest boxers ever and the way they could move and have their stance and really be just so elusive. I mean, Willie Pep, go watch Willie Pep. Why do you think he was able to move everywhere and do what he was able to do? He never got wide. He never got wide with that, okay? He was just so beautiful. Move. That's the greatest footwork guy ever, arguably, anyways. And you watch how his feet are. You can move, he can move better. You know what I mean? All that, okay? And then when we talk about punching power, I mean, do you think James Tony wasn't a hard puncher and Ray Leonard and Ray Robinson used to knock people dead?
talking about is that stance and the head placement, your head's back over your right foot. Now that's the foundation. That's the foundation. That doesn't mean you gotta be stuck in that position at all times. Because when you have that foundation, then you can bait a man, you can give it to him, you can take it away from him, okay? So that's something that I just wanted to cover. It's like I said, swinging a tennis racket, uh, swinging a baseball bat, uh, a golfer. You don't see any golfers out here with a stance like that. When have you ever seen a golfer hitting a golf ball like this, right? Why, if he stood like this, do you really think that he's going to twist and hit the golf ball and be able to get torque in his hips to knock the ball 300 yards, right? So why would it be any different in boxing? That's what you're doing in boxing. You're swinging and you're throwing. All the power comes from your hip twist. People think it comes from, a lot of people think it comes from pushing, a, like put, putting, power, putting weight on your leg. No, it's about twisting to your hips. It's hip turn. Everything's hip turn. You're not going to see nobody swing no golf club like this. Have you seen it? Nope. I play golf. I mean, you, you played some golf, right? Yeah. I mean, you know I mean? what good golfer do you know has a wide stance? Because you can't turn your hips. A baseball player, some of these guys, I mean, I've, I, I guess I have, I really haven't, but I've heard, I've heard because I'm not a, Real big on baseball. I've heard some, there's some baseball guys. That some, but again, that's not nowhere near the majority. It's like 95%. Like you see Barry Bonds. He's, Barry Bonds is the, one of the greatest hitters ever, and all he does is push his butt back and his feet are right there. Okay, he's just a little bit outside of shoulder width. And, and, and it's not just outside of shoulder width where your head's in the middle. He gets his head back over his, his, his head is more towards his, his back foot. So he's got the power in his back hand to swing the bat. When you're throwing a football, your head's back here. Your head's not here. Your head's not in the middle, and you're not wide like that. Okay? So, that's, like I said, swinging a tennis racket. Who did you ever see swinging a tennis racket like this? Right? You watch Serena. You watch all of them. They're, they're, they're just, they got a strong base where they're just a little bit outside of shoulder width. They're not getting, they're not getting past that shoulder. Now, now, what happens is, you get a lot of guys, like I said, they get a narrow stance, and when they get the narrow stance, guys are able to get to them and come over the top, and they stand too straight up, because they stand too straight up, they're able to see. So, so what they do instead, when that starts to go wrong for them, they, they get this wide base, because they feel like, okay, when I stand too close, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm up too straight, and then I can't move there. I get, I get to stand up too tall. So they get to, but what happens is, the reason the problem is, is what we're talking about, pushing your butt back. If, you, if, if, you're, if, you're, if you're here and you're narrow, and you don't push your butt back, you're not going to feel stability. You're not going to feel like you can move because you're up a little too high, or you, you feel like a guy can gain ground ground on you. You can't get your legs on because you got to push your butt back. You're here, you push your butt back, you can move. You can move, 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 you can move. You go, you move, 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 move. Bam, bam, bam. My butt's down. Boom, boom, bam. I can move. I can move. I can move. I can move. Everything I'm doing is right in here. It's all in my waist. And I'm not stressing my legs. This way, that way, and boom. Step, 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 right? Yeah. If, if, if I'm here, I'm not going to move as fluid, okay? But a lot of guys do it because they won't even push their butt back. They'll just stand wide. Yeah. You know what I mean? So that's something you guys could take into the gym and keep in mind when you're in the gym, practicing that, especially beginners. It's just a basic fundamental that when you when you're straight, uh, stand straight up, Okay, and all he's going to do is not, he's not going to focus on his knee bending. He's going to focus on his butt going back. Now his knees bend without all that tension in his, in his, in his uh, quadriceps, okay? He's got it, and he's got it in his glutes. And when you got it in, when you, that's it. You can move. When you, got it in, when, you got it in your, when you got it in your glutes, then you can move, boom, boom, like all that. You can waist bend. You can do your waistband, you move your body, it's all in waistband, all in waistband. You bend your waist, you're able to pivot, bend your waist, you're able to pivot, boom, step. Do what you got to do, boom, boom. You get a punch, boom, boom, everything's a twist, bop, bop, bop. You get all that torque. You get too wide and you can't do it, see? And you got your feet right there, heads over the right, stance in there. Now you're able to 
do all that from your waistband. I'm able to move, I'm able to move. I can move this way, I can move that way. All that, all that, bang. All right? When I go here, I don't gotta, I can just give a guy a little, just a push back on my butt, boom, boom, boom. Step, 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 boom. All that. You're ready to defend, you're ready to punch off it. You're ready, you got to sit down when you're ready to punch. I remember when I trained, trained Calvin Brock, and Evander Holyfield came to his fight. And as he says, oh, that's all he told me. He says, Calvin's this close to having a beautiful stance. He said, all he needs to do is just push his butt back a little bit. Push his butt back, back. Now he's ready to go like he's like a cat. If he wants to pounce on somebody, he's ready to do it. He was standing too straight up. His feet weren't wide, but he was standing too straight up. So that little pushback really helps. So don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. I really appreciate your guys' support. Um, also, follow me on TikTok and Instagram at Tommy Keller Boxing. Go to the website, worldclassboxinggym.com. Get on the email list so you guys are up to date with everything I have coming out. And I'll see you guys next time. There by Calvin Brock. Immediately, referee J. Lady called in the medical people. He saw that the eyes in Lawrence's head rolled back with one explosive left hook. The greatest trainer I've worked with in my entire 20 years of boxing, that combines my amateur and professional career. He taught me the skills, the conditioning, the training that I needed to go all the way to the world title, challenge for the world title against him, but I didn't make a clear score. The uh, conditioning, the diet, teaching, the knowledge, getting there and beat.